Vocabulary 4. Hi, my name is Sonia Berger and you are watching the Best My Test TOEFL Vocabulary video series. Our first word today is congregate and as we've done in the past, we're going to break the word up in order to understand it better. Let's start with the prefix con. There it is, another version would be com. So the prefix con means with or together, it's a Latin prefix. Con or com, with or together. And the root word also comes from a Latin word that means a flock. So to congregate literally means to flock together, to gather together. And we're going to look at a sample sentence in which the word congregate is used. Penguins congregate in groups to stay warm. These group congregations facilitate reproduction in extremely cold temperatures. Our next word is courtship. For humans, courtship is that period during which two people get to know each other better before they make their relationship more permanent. In animals, it refers to special behavior that they use to attract a mate for sex. Now this behavior can take different forms. For example, some animals will use vocalizations, sounds, to attract mates. Others will use magnificent displays. Think about the peacock with, with its elaborate feather display. And other animals, such as birds, for example, will dance to attract their mates. Here is a sample sentence that illustrates the use of the word courtship. The ultimate purpose of courtship is to attract a receptive mate. Different courtship behaviours also serve to reduce territorial aggression between birds. Our next word is incubate. Incubate is a verb. And to incubate eggs means to sit on them in order to keep them warm and bring them to hatching. The noun form of incubate is incubation. So let's recap. The verb is incubate, sitting on eggs to keep them warm so that they will hatch in the end. And the noun form is incubation. Birds incubate their eggs to keep them at an appropriate temperature. Incubation ensures normal egg development. Our next word also deals with eggs. Hatch is a verb. An egg is hatched or hatches when it breaks, letting out the young bird, reptile or insect. Please note that the verb hatch can be used both transitively and intransitively. When a verb is transitive, the action goes over, is performed upon, an object. In other words, the action, the verb, has an effect on the object. The bird hatched the eggs. So in this case, the bird hatched the eggs. The eggs would be the object. In this case, there is no object. The egg hatched after two weeks. Also, the little animal that emerges from the shell, from the egg, is called a hatchling. You'll often see that suffix when you refer to small things, small birds, small animals. We often use the suffix ling. Guinea fowl hatchlings are called keats. In the wild, a guinea hen might hatch 20 keats, but as few as five may survive. Now let's examine the word hibernation. In simple terms, hibernation is a long winter sleep that animals undertake in order to conserve energy because the food is not enough during that period. In fact, the word hibernation comes from a root that means winter. So what happens during this extended period of inactivity? The animal's metabolism slows down, the temperature is lower, the heart rate is slower, and so is the breathing. And we refer to this process as hibernation. The verb that we use to refer to it is hibernate. 
When an animal enters this state, we say it hibernates. An animal that hibernates is called a hibernator. And here are some examples. Bats, birds, snakes, hedgehogs and squirrels. Let's look at a sample sentence. Bats hibernate through the cold winter months. During hibernation, bats can survive in freezing temperatures. That's all for today. For more information about TOEFL vocabularies or TOEFL practices, go to the Best Mic Test website www.bestmictest.com